Hey, pal. Hey, guys. New studio, bro. Finally, hey? Uh, I think it's been many years in the making that we've wanted a slightly larger space. And for the first time, mm. we've got that. We've taken... We've been off for two weeks. So we did the episode with my old man. Yeah. And then uh, we spent the next week building up the new studio. There's Ryan... There's the studio, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, we're very proud of it, and uh, a much bigger space. It, it sort of came to light during the episode with my old man that if we're going to have people on the show, because we want to have now, we've got a few people lined up to come on the show, then we need a better, more professional space, and uh, we've knocked down a couple of walls, done a bit of painting, and uh, yeah, we, we're very proud of our, our new setup. Yeah, it's been, um, I've been kind of eager to get back into it, especially now that, you know, we've got this new space all lacquer buttoned up. Uh, feels like a fresh start again, episode 201, uh, new space. It's kind of been exciting to yeah. get back into it. Eh? So It's actually easier to chat like this as well. So <laughs> if you're listening to the audio, then actually come across to YouTube and have a, Look at what we're talking about. But uh, yeah, and then uh, last week, I actually decided I uh, needed a bit of a break and uh, went off to Sun City, which was just power. It was such an awesome uh, five days I spent there. Mm. And uh, yeah, if you're in the Joburg area and you like, you think uh, Sun City's gone down or not uh, as nice as it was in the past, uh, believe me, you're mistaken. It's so neat and clean and uh, so much for the kiddies to do. What an awesome uh, place to visit. Uh, you must go, Paul. It's, it's an absolute no-brainer if you're in Joburg. Go yeah. spend a bit of time at Sun City. No, I'm dead keen. Um, yeah, I've got a bit of a break coming up at the end of the month, taking the family down to uh, the Kruger Park. Kitties are very excited to, to see the wild animals down there. But, uh, yeah, if I get a gap, I'm going to go and check the Sun City spot out because didn't they do like a massive no, upgrade not so long ago? They spent well over a billion. No, there, was a huge, there was a huge revamp. Um, yeah. and the palace is – it's uh, I, don't, I don't think there's anywhere like that in the world, to be honest. The mm. breakfast at the palace is just ridiculous. <laughs> and uh, the, the, just the amount of things for the kiddies and that to do – don't you feel at the moment there is a real vibe about South Africa? A lot to do with our sport. Our sportsmen have, are to thank for this. But there's just this vibe about South Africa at the moment. A lot of pro-South African things going on. I don't know if it's the fact that, you know, touch wood, we haven't had load shedding in a long time. Our rugby team is just dominating. Uh, Drikus is the UFC middleweight champion of the world. And there's just an awesome atmosphere around the country and when you go to a place like Sun City which is just down the road for us mm. it's um it's just cool to be there because everyone is sort of feeling this vibe and everyone is like no you're proud. Not, you're not wrong uh, you know I think it's also got a lot to do they were talking about on the radio the other day as well listening to that of all things but um I think it's also post this whole election phase you know things seem to be yeah you know getting a bit of stability and uh, yeah, definitely way more, way more positive vibes in the atmosphere, which is which is good for us. I dig it. <laughs> but let's jump into it. some aviation news. A big one that popped up, or we saw yesterday, Cathay Pacific has grounded its fleet of 48 Airbus A350 aircraft for inspections after a rare engine component failure forced a Zurich-bound flight to return. That was on September the second. The airline cancelled 24 return flights as a precaution. Cathay's engineering director stated that each aircraft would undergo rigorous inspections with those cleared for operation returning to service. The incident marks the first failure of this engine components on the A350 fleet worldwide. Andy Evans uh, brought up a point uh, posted on Fly Africa. He said uh, the headline a bit misleading. But the inspection is quick and if the components were seen to be defective, they are changed and the aircraft is returned to service straight away so it's not not it's not a geared turbofan issue that's mm. going to be affected for years it's a, it's a relatively quick fix but uh you know people do listen to us for our financial advice and if you are looking at uh, purchasing some rolls royce shares 
now's the time to do it. <laughs> uh, six six point four seven percent down in the uh, London Stock Exchange yesterday. Yeah, yeah that's uh, that's quite a hit in the pocket. Um, but back to the headline story, you know, it, it is amazing again how the media will take a headline like that and just make it sound a hell of a lot worse than it really is. Yeah. But um, your 48 aircraft out of your fleet to to go down at a shot is going to also cause a few rostering issues, not so. But yeah, it's going to affect things. So. <laughs> uh, but I suppose with an airline like Cathay, uh, they're going to sort that out pretty quickly and uh, be back. Let's go to a real positive story here. Uh, you obviously watch the rugby. Definitely didn't Every miss that Every South game. African watched the rugby. Mm. Uh, Emirates made history by performing the uh, an amazing flyby. Didn't get the timing quite right, but it's uh, still an A380 and it still looked kind of cool. The aircraft flew 500 feet above uh, Emirates Airline Park, otherwise known as Ellis Park, before the Springboks first All Blacks match, showcasing Emirates' commitment to South Africa. The event, of course, coincided as well with the return of the second A380 on the uh, Dubai Joburg route. So positive things there. But uh, look, a little bit embarrassing that it has to be a foreign airline to fly over our stadium during a Springbok game. Yes and no. Uh, I think, uh, look, it was a nice surprise. I didn't expect to see that A380. I was sitting there in front of the TV, beer in hand, and the next minute, you know, yeah. they shoot across this A380, and I was like, yeah. what? So it was it was a nice surprise, and you know, I think an aircraft that size, which obviously South Africa don't have any of our own flying around. True, you know, let Emirates step in. They do own the stadium, so I think they have every right to claim that one. Yeah, for sure. But I believe that Safi are going to be doing a fly past over the Cape Town Stadium in the next game. Oh, really? Yeah. And then there's there's a farmer in the Free State lined up in Bloom with his one seven two for the following. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That, uh, I, I, these fly bars are pretty cool. Um, 95 World Cup, mm. that fly bar, I don't think it was 500 feet above the stadium. It was about five feet. Yeah, All of those pictures looked like you almost sunk into the stadium there. Yeah, that was all Laurie K and, yeah. and crew. And, uh, and a 747 taking thrust on... Yeah. Into the, uh, you know, over the stadium there must, must have been a, a, a vibe. <laughs> uh, A380 a bit different, but it, it looked, uh, it, it really did look nice. And it topped off with a, an amazing game of uh, rugby as well. Like I say, so much of the mood of South Africa has to do with how the Springboks perform. Yeah. And if the Springboks are performing well, and basically Rusty can pick any team that he wants. <laughs> They run out on the field and they, they go out and win. And South Africans are just uh, vibing off the off the spring box. It's just so cool to see. I, I love it. Look, uh, there's no way that those All Blacks were not intimidated by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, those like Zulu warriors that run out on the field. Yeah, the MP. Just, just the three of them yeah. make that haka look like <laughs> a fucking ballet dance. Yeah. Um, so that, no. yeah that one MP is on some serious <laughs> juice, I think, yes, as well. Jack does anything. <laughs> but uh, it is an amazing time to be proudly South African. So, yeah, looking forward to more of that. Eh? Uh, heading off to the States, JetBlue is reportedly considering offering its pilots uh, early retirement packages as the airline grapples with uh, financial difficulties and aims to streamline its operations. I hate these things because it's like, is, is this a sign of what's to come for other? I mean, JetBlue is a major Mm. airline it's not a little rinky dink uh, operator there and uh early retirement or like this is like a covid type of talk you know yeah. what's the story there i don't know just i think there's quite a bit of that coming out of the states you know uh, what was but it's it? hard to uh, read it was though. one of the other airlines that had said that they um won't be doing any further crew training for the rest of the year. i mean type ratings and that kind of stuff so all of that's coming to a halt. I don't know if that's... A lot of that stuff is supply chain mm. with obviously the max issue and that as well. But... Uh, Probably also a bit of overguesstimation as to how many pilots... Because there was a lot of panic about you know, pilot shortage and this and, and the next thing. So it's like get as many guys yeah. into the holding pool as you possibly can. But I don't think it's going to be as dismal as this makes it out to be. You don't reckon? Mm -mm. Uh, JetBlue's... 
So the decision could have significant implications, not only for JetBlue's future, but also for the pilots who may be impacted by these changes. No doubt that they'll be swamped up by some of the airlines that do need pilots. But like you say, a lot of these big carriers have stopped their training and that for, for the year. So we got mm. supply chain issues. We got the geared turbofan issues. We've got the max story. So a, a combination of those things is, is going to affect your chances of getting a job. So if you are a SAFA looking at shifting across to the States, yeah. maybe hang five. Hang five. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it changes in the future. CrowdStrike has expressed its intention to sit down with Delta to find a resolution over that operational meltdown. So I'm, that's all I'm going to read. I want to have a chat with you about this stuff. Okay, cool. You and I are quite proud about the fact that uh, we went, uh, we've gone fully digital yeah. at the uh, company we work at and uh, we built a lot of quite nice automated systems that we are very proud of. One of the things that comes with that is you have to keep updating these things, make sure they the latest tech, you know, we've got AI and all these things working for us at the moment. But does this open us up to threats that we aren't aware of? And does it put us at uh, a much greater risk? Just before the podcast started, I received about the thousandth call from mm. a spam number. Automated uh, calls. I don't know if yours have gone up. People yeah. just... Uh, emails with one letter different in the email with an invoice that looks identical to the normal company's invoice. And uh, it, it seems to be getting worse and worse. No, it I is. Mean, it's, it's a major, major threat. And uh, you have to be on top of it and, and you know, keep your eyes wide shut on all these spam calls and the emails that you receive and open. So this story with CrowdStrike, at least if you've got a, a company like them and Delta and they are working together it started off as a blame game thing delta mm. was saying it was their fault they came back and said look they offered all the support that they could in this digital era you're going to have to have companies working together you mm. can't have uh, this blame game going on delta's expertise is obviously not on the it side of things certainly not on the cyber security side of things so they're going to rely on on systems in place and it's a big thing because this is the first of many to happen and it's going to affect some of our listeners' travel over the next six months to a year without question. Yeah. And can you imagine, I mean, with this story, with all those flights basically canned, I mean, remember back in the day, if you couldn't get a, a load sheet sent to the aircraft, you could uh, just whip out a manual one quickly. Yeah. Those days are done. You know, <laughs> everything is... Yeah. Everything is uh, yeah, it's all geared towards having it uh, done on a tablet and, and you know, relying so heavily on technology. It's kind of scary. And it ain't going to change. Mm -mm. Uh, Jetstar expansion in Perth. I'll leave this one for you because uh, oh, these are your chums. These are, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> so Jetstar significantly expanding its operations in Perth by launching a third service to Asia, establishing a new aircraft and pilot base, relocating domestic flights to Terminal 2 for better connectivity. Doesn't, didn't we have some mates that went to Jetstar back in the day? They were hiring at one uh, point, Saffirs. They, they were. They were. Uh, I think I there were a few, a few South Africans. I wonder if they're still there. I'm not, not entirely sure. I haven't heard much from them. I mean, all our mates are with either Air North or Nexus or Qantas Link. But. Yeah, this was sort of before that. They, sort of 2017, 18, there was a bit of a rush to, yeah. to Jetstar, I'm sure. Yeah. Is Jetstar in Japan as well? Yeah, this flies for Jeep, they're still in but, um, Is it the same crowd? I think so. Yeah. I stand to be corrected. But yeah, so this expansion is expected to provide more low fare options and boost the Western Australia's tourism economy with new flights to Singapore, Phuket, and Bangkok. Yeah, so uh -huh. good, good news for, uh, for the Aussies. Uh, I was having a squiz last night at, um, at what's going on in Australia from an aviation perspective uh not all sunshine and rainbows there at the moment so uh there's still opportunities i suppose are they still we need to get barry on the line barry if you're listening maybe you must uh yeah yeah there was a massive there was like a push drive. but now it's quiet yeah are the guys still going across so last i heard there was also visa issues maybe dylan can let us know yeah let's let's 
let's get some facts in before we. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's. <laughs> should we clear this up right now? <laughs> <laughs> facts and opinion. We are what an opinion based, purely opinion based. Yeah. News. If you want the correct information, guys, uh, consider an alternative source <laughs> we will comment on our opinion of uh actual stories that are out there and uh, hopefully we do that in a way that's sort of not boring it's also done by two guys that actually fly a flipping airplane yeah. so uh, it's, a, it's an aviation podcast by aviators for aviators with sound financial advice <laughs> don't forget that yeah. <laughs> that's the most important part uh, uh, Vistara is set to merge with Air India, ceasing to exist as a separate brand. That'll happen as early as November the 12th. This merger follows the clearance for Singapore Airlines to hold a 25.1% stake in Air India. Vistara's operations, including its routes and aircraft, will be integrated into Air India, impacting passengers and loyalty program members. The transition aims to streamline ops and expand Air India's network as if it's not big enough already. <laughs> <laughs> Lot, lots going on in India. That's it's about good. time we pulled off an Indian special again. I yeah, think. I think we're overdue for that. Eh? Hey, yeah, you again, Aussie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so what have we got here? Flight so attendants. Qantas flight attendants win big pay rises under Australian law. <laughs> okay, so hundreds of Qantas flight uh, attendants will receive significant pay rises after the airline has agreed to a settlement under Australia's same job, same pay laws. Very socialistic. 30%, but... 30%, eh? So that's going to apply to domestic cabin crew with potential extensions to other subsidiaries. And Qantas estimates an, a 60 million Aussie dollar impact. impact. $60 million. Yeah. Aussie dollars. That's like... Due to the increased salary. Yeah. That's a lot of rondellas eh, if you convert. If you convert, <laughs> <laughs> let's stay pro South Africa on this one. Um, right, Lufthansa CEO heads to Portugal to discuss potential stake in TAP. Don't hear much from, I must say, uh, I was looking at this one because I was trying to find some uh, Lufthansa stock footage to use. Yeah. And I don't think we've spoken about Lufthansa once the whole year. No, they've been very under the radar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but their CEO flew to Lisbon. They're looking at a 19.9 stake in TAP. Uh, government is keen to find a private equity partner for TAP after a previous attempt was derailed by a scandal. Lufthansa competes with Air France, KLM, and IAG for the deal. I think they're going to go for this one and get that uh, deal done. Mm. Is Lufthansa still a viable option for South Africans at least or to use as a, or Frankfurt or Munich to use as a bit of a hub. I'm glad you bring that up because I read this morning that uh, I think they've just reinitiated their Joburg Munich route, ah. which was an SAA version one route yes. back in the day, remember? Yeah. So, yeah, I think we have options now of being able to go Joburg direct Frankfurt as well as Joburg Munich, which is lacquer. And it's just in time because it's Oktoberfest. Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine that. <laughs> Shout out to my mate Dean. We went to Oktoberfest in 2001. Yeah. yeah. That's on now, isn't it? Yeah, it's in September. Yeah, first yeah. two weeks of September. So, mm. yeah, oh. it's now. It's now. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Brings back some good memories. That was good fun. Yeah. Uh, what is cool with Lufthansa, when I drive home in the afternoon, the 748 is normally parked at that gate. Yeah. Just as you. Take the off-ramp there, past the airport. I saw them landing 2-1 left the other morning. I caught it just as I, they were going over it on short finals. It was, it was impressive. The 748 is still the most majet, yeah, it's majestic, beautiful. majestic airplane. It really is stunning. Shape is just beautiful. And uh, going back to Emirates, Emirates might argue that point with their new A380 livery. Yeah, Have look, you seen it? Can't deny it. It actually looks pretty cool. It does, yeah. yeah. That was the one, of course, doing the flyby. Eh? Mm. Yeah. Uh, foundation supports over 50 global projects focusing on children's education, healthcare, and empowerment. They're pretty much our national carrier. <laughs> <laughs> hey? yeah. They do our flybys. They, they, you see a lot more of them flying overhead than you do anyone else. And with that program that they initiated a couple of months ago with um, recycling their passenger seats, a lot of our school kids are going to be carrying around <laughs> school bags. Yeah. Now. 
Fart. Constructed of old fart cushions. <laughs> <laughs> fart <laughs> cushion. <laughs> uh, school bags. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Safran acquires AR firm Preligence. I think you call it for 243 million. Not so much the story itself that we're interested. Of course, Safran, a, a big company dealing a lot in the military side of things as well. Mm. But the fact that they're purchasing a big AR firm is you're going to see a lot more of these things. So companies that are maybe a little bit too far behind in the AR game are, you know, trying to buy what they can. Yeah. How big of a thing is that for aviation? Are you going to see that from an airline perspective as well? Are airlines going to start getting involved having to, is it just on the tech side? Do you know what I mean? Because I think there's a, there's a, there's a big question mark around that AI in aviation and how it's going to impact aviation and the different sectors within aviation going forward. And it's a, it's a massive topic and uh, I think a very interesting one to look at, which we need to keep an eye on. I dig it, I must say. Mm. That's the thing that, that sparks my interest. Yeah. Um, I, I really uh, sort of enjoyed researching it. It's a, it's, a, it's a subject that basically changes all the time. And what I enjoy with this, you know, aviation for years has always been, yeah, even when we started the pod, one of the hardest things for us was, are we are we allowed to be talking about aviation? Because it's always the same people that were yeah talking aviation. It felt you know? like you know you, you, had, you to had to this go and garner permission to do it. You had like a, yeah. we had like imposter syndrome at mm. the beginning. Certainly don't anymore. Say <laughs> what the hell we want. But uh, back then <laughs> yeah. we certainly did. But what's so cool with AI? And obviously I'm using aviation as the funnel here, but it's across the board. Mm. AI is so new that there are no experts at the moment and you might uh, put your attention in the wrong direction you know you have to it's so new and everyone in their own industry is trying to figure out you know what's it going to affect how's it going to affect us and what can we do to leverage it and there is so much that you can do to leverage this technology yeah. in your everyday life it's it's crazy i was listening to a podcast the other day as well where <clears throat> these guys are talking about it and the ai at the moment is a bit like what the internet was back yeah. in 95, you know, yeah. when it was so new and there was such an unknown about this thing yeah. and where it's going to go. And uh, yeah, I think, you know, if you're looking at past lessons, mm. you got to keep, you got to stay on top of this, man. Yeah. So that's my game at the moment. I'm, I'm really trying to get in as much involved in that as I can. I find it rather interesting. On a more negative sort of post, this one came out. Uh, it was titled A Nightmare at 30,000 Feet, My Horrific Experience with Fly Safair. Now, it did have two little asterisks followed by two little asterisks there, which means that this comment was generated on uh, probably ChatGPT because yeah. that's one of the, if you're trying to figure out if, if <laughs> AI did it for you, that's the, the first thing if someone doesn't take out the asterisks. Nonetheless, uh, you were telling me about the story yesterday. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I still haven't made up my mind as to whether or not I like posts like this or, or it, sometimes yeah. wonder if you should rather keep that opinion to yourself. I'm not so sure. I think what, what was surprising about this post was the fact that it was such a surprise. We are so used to only really seeing positive commentary on Fly Safi. Yeah which is normally the case. I mean, they're always on time, you yeah. know, reliable, good service and everything. And then this comes out and you think, shit. And you almost want to like dismiss the story, but I, I read it and I thought, let me see what this person has to actually say. And, um, you know, it sounds plausible. Uh, she had a really shitty experience. <laughs> 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 and, uh, you know, unfortunately, I think none of the airlines are going to get away with not having the odd day when things go wrong. But um, this doesn't sound like it was particularly well handled. No. And, uh, you know, hopefully they do something about it because there is fair competition out there at the moment and you don't want more of this kind of story getting out there. So Yeah, the more that's out there, you start to think otherwise and, well, I'm not going to take that risk. I'm going to go fly on Semi or Link or something like that. Yeah. But this basically started off with 
a mother and a daughter couldn't sit next to each other. And this is what I find is bullshit because this hit home with me. So she gets on after an hour. Yeah, delay. I'd be pissed off with that. Yeah, the, the rest, the delay, I can handle. Yeah, but getting delay. on board with your five-year-old child and then they yeah. they can't find a spot for you no, to that's sit bullshit. next to each other. That's fucking horse nuts. That's bullshit. You yeah. never separate a parent from their child. No, that yeah, that is just one hundred percent bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, but then the rest of the stuff, you know, like a leaking toilet and effluence going down the aisle and everything, you know, one really wonders why would you even get airborne as an aeroplane in that state, you know? So mm -hmm. it's kind of... Yeah, there was a couple of people that were having a go at the captain. I don't think the captain's got anything to do with it. I don't no. The crew also probably on their 35th sector of the day. Gotten used to the smell. <laughs> 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 and uh, they're probably as cutful as, as anyone else. Yeah. But uh, we don't normally mention negative fly safety stories. In fact, I don't think we ever have. That's why it was such a surprise. That's why it was such a surprise. And I wasn't going to do this one, but we've been so pro safety but, you know, yeah, look, there is, a, there is a shit one that comes out yeah, every now and again. Every now and again. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm sure they'll fix it up and no doubt their team there will sort things out yeah um yeah paul it, it's it's so cool to be in the studio I'm, I'm i'm so proud of of where we've come where we are now uh got this little poster behind me because our motto at the beginning were those sort of incremental gains and uh that's been our our thing and we'll mm. continue to to push that but uh give us a comment as well it was so nice on after the episode with my old man the, the amount of comments that came through and the phone calls and uh, it was just was really nice and i i'd like to get the engagement back yeah with our with our listeners that 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 makes a big big difference but we hope you all like the new setup in the studio and uh yeah you'll be seeing a lot more from uh, yours truly i do have uh a little brown air toolbox recommendation for you if you want well, it's been a uh, it's been a while since we had uh, one of those. So yeah, a, a, a very very <laughs> basic one, but a, a good one. Yesterday, you asked me for, do you have something that that does this? And it was like, yeah, I do. Very quick response. Mm. So so it gave me a bit of an idea. Not all these things have to be massive things about that require PowerPoint presentations. Sometimes they can be nice and simple. There's another very cool recommendation that I have. If you've got a device at home, doesn't matter what it is, you're trying to get it set up to do whatever you want, or a camera or bloody coffee machine, and you can't get it to do what you want. Any electronic device. Any electronic device. Yeah. And uh, it, it doesn't have to be electronic, whatever it is. Yeah. Any, any device that ordinarily you think, shit, I've got to go read the instructions mm. to figure out how this works, which of course you're never going to do. Most things these days don't even come with, with instructions. If you put on ChatGPT or any large language model, but most people are using ChatGPT, and you take a picture of the device. In other words, let's say it's got a red light on our camera there is flashing, yeah. and we're not so sure what this red light is. You can take a picture with your phone mm. of the camera of that red light and say, what does this red light mean on my camera? <laughs> and it will look at the picture, it'll know what camera it is, and it'll tell you what that red light means any instructions that you want to ask you take a picture of the device please give me a quick start guide as to how to work this coffee machine and it'll tell you exactly and it's a cool very easy uh no fuss way of doing it and it works every time i'm glad you bring that up it's a pretty cool uh piece of advice because how often have you bought something you know, used it for a while and then maybe like left it standing for a couple of months. And then when you do want to try and figure it out, you realize that you threw away the instructions. You always throw away them. <laughs> it's always in the box. The box takes up yeah. too much space and you, you chuck them. So that takes care of that problem yeah, as well. Yeah, it works. It, Very it's, cool. uh, it's a legit one. And there'll be some more of these uh, these ones going forward. Sports news, Drickus, like I said at the beginning, is the UFC middleweight champ. We took two weeks off, so we didn't get to celebrate that the week after became the middleweight champ. Yeah. It is no small feat, believe you me. I'm a huge Joe Rogan fan. Like, Joe Rogan's been my hero for, for whatever Joe Rogan does. He starts a podcast, I start a podcast. He, he loves jiu-jitsu, <laughs> I, I, I start jiu-jitsu. Um, yeah, big time. And uh, he's been a, a good source of advice. But 
man, I was so pissed off with him during that uh, Drickus. Their commentary, their commentary was, was so cuck. Yeah. Um, they have, uh, they call it fight companions. So they normally get some of his mates there, and um, they commentate during the live UFC. So you mm. sync up your YouTube with the UFC, and then you can listen to uh, Rogan having a conversation. And um, it was so negative towards. I was so pissed off. I was like. Fuck this, I'm, I'm turning it off. And it was the <laughs> first time you kind of like, you know that saying, you know, it, you don't ever want to meet your heroes. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, yeah. It felt a bit like that because <laughs> it was the first time I was so, uh, yeah, disappointed with uh, with Joe Rogan. But, uh, yeah, there was that Springbok golden era of rugby is just unbelievable to witness. Yeah. And that synced up with just this, uh, this sort of, wave that South Africa's on at the moment. And then uh, your Formula One team back in the mix there at Monza. I'll tell you what, uh, it was a good weekend to be a Ferrari supporter for a change. Yeah. Uh, I have been changing uh, my, <laughs> your my mind every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, I'll hold on to that Ferrari supporter ship till yeah. the end of the year. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was good to see them come back pretty damn strong. Um, yeah, Red Bull, Red Bull are in a bit of a jam at that the moment. Big time. Uh, They've got to get themselves sorted out because it's a, a sign of the tech thing as well. Mm. If you if you fall behind, yeah, you you're yeah. gonna fall behind <laughs> quickly. So uh, yeah. yeah, but uh, good sport nonetheless. Yeah, look, awesome show, Paul. Thanks for joining me, and uh, we'll be back, of course, next week. We do have some guests coming on the show, so mm. there will be uh, a few new elements too the Brownie podcast going forward. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Thanks for the support and for listening and uh, it's been a great job. Catch you later. Bye for now.